Welcome to Greenshine Farmers video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome to Greenshine Farmers. Today we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the farm. We'll show you guys what we're working on, what we're trying to do to get ready for winter. We've got our tomatoes in here. They're all finishing up. You can see they're they had a decent run, but I think it's time to get them out, even though we probably could get a few more weeks out of them. See, we've got a lot of green ones here, but you know, we're about first week of October. If we wait too much longer, we're not gonna be able to get a crop in here. So we're clearing these out today. We've got all of our uh, all of our lettuce seedlings here. We really went big because the seed that we use for the paper pot transplanter has a coating on it and those seeds are typically not good beyond one year. So, um, so we just had to use them up and this will all get planted. And since we germinate it in our cooler, um, at 60 degrees, the perfect germination temperature for lettuce, we got almost near 100% germination. But if you're looking at these and you're like, it doesn't look like 100%, you can see it's because actually, mice are eating the tops and this is a problem so I set a trap because I had a feeling we had mice in here and they actually came and ate the almond butter right out of the middle of the trap without it going off I don't know how but um, we're gonna try to set a few more traps and try a few different things because I mean you can see these are just absolutely beautiful really don't want to lose this you guys harvesting strawberries Mmm, what do you think? I believe we're still getting strawberries in this late. Yeah. Yeah, he's looking great. I was trying to figure out how to take the tops of them off. So since the last episode, the cutworm episode, as I'm calling it, uh, things are looking a lot better. You know, that day was really frustrating, and we kind of had a decision to make. Uh, we could either throw up our hands and say we quit, or we could put down our head and try to figure out how to fix it and we really went hardcore that day in the next few days and just really really started turning our beds and you can see then I mean, we got some beautiful beautiful near perfect germination um, these beds are absolutely pumping we're hitting them with compost tea every week um, and yeah I mean everything that we've been planting now has just been spot on so while I don't think we're out of the woods yet it's looking good. Um, however, you know, you never want to talk too soon. With cutworms, I've noticed they're actually, they seem to be most susceptible, or they seem to be at their worst when your plants are about this stage. And this is like right when we're about to harvest them. And this is when they'll come in and they'll just wipe out huge portions, you know, like seemingly overnight. You can see we've got some spinach mixed in here. That's kind of an accident. We did spinach first. It didn't really take, uh, so we did a bed of lettuce, and then the spinach started coming up. But, you know, we still do have a little bit of cutworm damage kind of just in here, but for the most part, it's been fairly limited. So I think we're, I think we're on the right track. All right, here we are here with all of our uh, fertilizer, compost, lime, uh, not compost, uh, azomite, uh, yeah, just everything we need to really get these beds turned. So we've been putting on a lot of money and just trying to really do things right, get really good fertilizer, um, you know, get our pH spot on, the azomite, the compost tea, lots and lots of compost. We've been going through about probably close to 10 yards a week and, uh, you know, because it's just like we might as well add it now because, you know, once this stuff is planted, you know, doing it right and really hitting it with the right fertilizer, the right amount of compost and getting your soil right could be the difference between getting, you know, one or two extra cuts, which in the winter time when we can't really replant, those cuts are absolutely crucial. Hi, buddy. Spraying. Spraying? Here we are in our second plot and uh, just pulling up these bean plants. They're, uh, they've finished out, you know, they've got um, some damage from the Mexican bean beetles. That just happens. I don't really worry about it. We usually get a pretty good harvest before, um, before we have to take them out. And honestly, we just kind of do the beans just for the soil. We don't really make any money on beans. They, they take too long to pick. 
um, and we can't charge enough for them to sell them wholesale so we really just kind of break even on this crop and do it for our soil uh, so I'm just going through and getting any last remainders now behind me is um, I think we have about 24 beds in this plot we've got some radishes here and then we're just getting all these beds ready adding a lot of compost um, because we're gonna need these beds for the winter and since we haven't done a lot of crops in these beds, I don't know exactly where the soil's at. If we go this way, you, know, you can kind of see, still needs some work. Um, these radishes here, you can just see they're, they're just stunted. Um, they should be getting close to full size, but um, you know something's off, especially in this little section here. So we're going to be adding a lot of compost, some more fertilizer, uh, some rock minerals, and uh, a little bit of gypsum, and, and really, you know, we just need to get this soil up to par before the winter comes. All right, here we are in plot number two. And as you can see, we're having to dig out these pathways and everything's, it's, it's a, on a bit of a, you know, when the guy plowed it up uh, last year, it was late at night and, and the beds all kind of snaked a little bit. So we'll have to go through and fix all this. As you can see, this, this has just been tarped the entire season. And what once was a bed has just kind of fused into one huge bed, I guess, just because of all the rain and runoff and whatnot. So we've got to redig all these pathways, and you can see the soil here is just, um, it's just a super heavy clay. There's a little bit of compost in there, but, you know, especially like we get down here, you know, this is going to be tough stuff to work with, so that's where the gypsum and all the um, azomite will really help. Nice umbrella, Odin. Nice umbrella. <laughs> That's a good umbrella. Yeah. All right, Daddy. All right, so right now, just getting ready to leave. I got to drive out to Tennessee today and pick up our high tunnels. Um, it's a rainy day, so it's kind of perfect. We're getting uh, we're getting Hurricane uh, Ma Michael right now. So uh, yeah, it's actually a lot worse than the hurricane uh, that everybody was warning us about. And uh, let's go check out how our beds are doing. These beds holding up nicely. We dug these trenches pretty well. Uh, we've got pretty good drainage here. Everything sort of slopes back down towards the creek. So this stuff's doing well. I was just in the other plot though and uh, not so much. We've got a lot of flooding over there and uh, a lot of water damage. We're definitely going to lose some crops. And this has been a hard year. This has just been a really wet year. and. Uh, Kind of a good thing why we're going to go get these tunnels is we'll, we'll sort of be able to mitigate some of these uh, heavy rains. But you can check out the creek. I mean, this thing is <laughs> is really gushing. I mean, I don't think it'll jump the bank, but it's close. I mean, it still have to rise another three or four feet, and then it still have to travel a bit uphill. But um, yeah, this thing and it starts going. All right, so this is our second plot. Just got these beds seeded the other day, and uh, as you can see, didn't do these beds, but right here, you know, we trenched them and everything, but, and I was out here this morning kind of trenching them some more just so the water would have somewhere to go. Um, not terrible, but we're definitely, you know, spots like this, we're definitely going to lose <laughs> some crops. All right, so we're going to end the episode the same way that we started it. Here we are in the greenhouse, you can see. Got all those tomatoes out. We got some arugula in the ground starting to come up. But this, this is the bad news. Our seedlings have been pretty much devastated. The traps didn't work. You know, there's still some lettuce left, but it's, it's pretty skimpy. And, you know, the ones that have like one leaf. If a plant gets stressed at this stage in its life, you know, it really, really makes it hard to... Uh, to grow later on so I you know I got some loose leaf lettuce mix and we're planting out plenty of spinach and everything else so you know to be honest I didn't even know where we were gonna put all that our fields pretty much maxed out at this point and uh, you know while we're at it I guess we can do a brief field update so yeah this stuff has gone off it has absolutely exploded so it's, it's encouraging. It shows that what we're doing is working. Um, 
So right here we've got our loose leaf lettuce bed. I had to harvest this yesterday, so it doesn't look as good because everything's just been harvested, but um, you know, our numbers are pretty good. This row gave us 54 pounds of arugula. I believe we got 39 pounds off of this row. Uh, this row of kale, we got 45 pounds. Um, and as you can see, I mean, this is near perfect growth on our, uh, on our loose leaf lettuce bed. I mean, you know, knock on wood, but almost zero cutworm damage. So I don't want to get too excited yet, but everything's really booming. Um, yeah, we're taking out plants. We're getting prepped for the winter. You know, it's literally right around the corner. It's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be 32 this weekend. So we're just going to try to get all of our tunnels up. We got our tunnels from Farmer's Friend. And uh, tomorrow and Friday, we're just going to be doing a mad push, trying to put up five high tunnels and maybe some low tunnels, pretty much covering this entire plot and a little bit of that plot too. Let's go into the walk-in cooler. Check that out. Woo! Each one of these boxes holds about 18 clamshells or eight pounds uh, in, in bulk. So yeah, we are, we are loaded up. Things are cranking along. Um, we had our biggest week yet, so, you know, after just, what was it, maybe three weeks ago when I did the cutworm episode, it feels good that we were able to get our beds prepped and really get things turned around. I feel really great at where the farm's at, and now the focus is just, you know, getting everything ready for winter. But, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and uh, see you next time. If you guys like this video, and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.